us. Hello, beauty friends. Welcome. I am Meredith Roddy from Beetle on an Artistic Wire. It is so wonderful to be back teaching classes for the Michaels Community Classroom. If you missed my um, overview, everything you need to know about jewelry, jewelry making via stringing that I did, gosh, about a month ago now, um, go back and watch that on the replay. We will also have this class available on the Michaels YouTube channel in about 24 hours. So if there's anything that you missed, if there's anything that I went over too, a little too fast, you can um, go and tomorrow watch and rewind and skip over the parts that you already got, no problem. So hello everybody who is here joining me live. And if you are watching it in the, on the Michaels YouTube channel, I'm so glad that you found this class. There are tons of other amazing Michaels classes that not only I have taught, but um, other makers have taught as well. And I know I have learned so much from being a part of this amazing um, Michaels Community Classroom project. So it's good, good to be here. And going forward, I'm teaching about a class a month right now. <clears throat> so we'll we'll see what happens over over the course of 2024. Um, but today, what I'm doing is I am actually introducing a new stringing material, and we're going to do a project with the new stringing material. I'm going to talk a little bit about the new string stringing material, and as Felicia mentioned, it is the repeat. 100% recycled jewelry, or jewelry cord. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, about what it means, about the packaging, and then we're going to be a really, then we're going to do a really fun, um, a really fun project. And hopefully I'll be able to show a couple of different ways to do the project. You know me, I like to kind of um, high spot it and say, well, what if we did this? And what if we did this? I will say at the top of the moment right here. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Can you probably hear it in my voice a little bit? Apologies out of the gate. Next class, I'll be 100%, I promise. So without further ado, Felicia, I think we're ready to go ahead and take that overhead camera and start talking about what we're going to be making today. So I mentioned that we are using a new jewelry making cord or beading cord. This is called... <laughs> Using repeat, and it is made from 100% recycled water bottles. So right from the get-go, that fills my heart with joy because I know that with the, the jewelry that I'm making, it is taking water bottles out of the ocean or out of the landfill and creating jewelry from them. Amazing. So a little bit about the package, just because it's so fun shaped like a water bottle, yes, but made out of cardboard, recycled cardboard. Another thing that's super fun about the packaging is it is actually the material is wrapped in a little baggie. So we wanted to make sure that everything about this project was sustainable. <laughs> that cough is gonna be coming a lot during this class. And again, many, many apologies. You can use this little baggie for your extra beads. You could use it for your project after you make it. Let's see if this one is a little bit big, but I think it'll it'll slip in here, no problem. One of my challenges is always, well, how am I gonna store my jewelry, right? Perfect size for a bracelet. This is a slightly different design that I made. I'm using the same cord. So lots and lots of different things that you can do with the repeat cord. But like in the, um, the, the glamour shot for today's project and the project that I'm going to be demonstrating today, we're going to be doing a simple <coughs> macrame square knot, a little bit of a variation because we are running the beads on the outside. So oftentimes you'll see beads running on the inside. Sometimes you'll see no beads at all. But for this project today, I'm running the beads on the outside of the design. What now, what is this, this crazy contraption right here? This is the beetle on tying station. Now, many of you are probably familiar with the beetle on tying station. We've used it in a lot of different product, 
project. <laughs> it is available at michaels.com on their online site. Unfortunately, it is not available in stores anymore, but that doesn't mean that you can't get it. It is certainly easy enough to order online. Um, however, if you don't have a tying station, which I highly recommend you get, but if you don't, that's okay too, because a clipboard is kind of the traditional way of doing these kinds of projects, and it will work perfectly well in this capacity, and I'm going to show how to do that. I have a little mini clipboard today. I would actually recommend doing a, a full-size one, but it was too big to get into my frame today. So we have the clipboard at top, which is going to hold our um, our project, and then a binder clip. This happens to be a gigantic binder clip, but a binder clip at the bottom to hold the second part in place. But I am going to be using my tying station to do the project today. Again, if you have a tying station, fantastic. If you don't, you can find it at michaels.com or <clears throat> in a pinch. A clipboard, or there are a ton of other devices um, in both in Michael's and out in the crafting world that that will um, will allow you to do the same type of project. So in Michael's, there are six colors of the repeat quartz. We've got black, we've got gray, we've got sand, <laughs> we have cloud and then we also have coral now mind you this is a larger package of the coral i just happen to have um have the larger package at home they are all this size in michael's and then lastly we have this awesome color of sky blue again i don't have a sky blue in the package here at my home studio i was planning on doing this class from the office today but unfortunately my um under the weatherness needed i needed to do a little, a little pinch hitting from home but you know what i pulled everything together and we're gonna do just fine <laughs> so for this project the um materials or the instruction sheet was available both on the um on the sign-in page and then also in um I believe Felicia has posted it if she hasn't I'm sure she's going to do that any minute now um so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to be demonstrating with the red color and with probably a um a contrasting cloud we'll see what what I end up picking up when we get to that part in the project, I used the same color, and that is perfectly fine. You can do contrasting colors. You can mix up your colors. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this project will also work with leather, with um, satin cord, with beelon, with all different kinds of stringing materials. So while I'm showing it with our new repeat, the 100% recycled uh, water bottle, new jewelry cord, the concepts and the, the skills are definitely, um, definitely repeatable to many, many other projects. And you'll probably recognize some some similarities in some things that we have um, have done in the past, both myself and Sarah Lovecraft for classes that we've done in the past for the Michaels Community Classroom. Now that I'm back from my sabbatical, I feel like I took a, a sabbatical for Michaels classes and it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be back. Okay, so I saw Felicia just posted the, um, the instructions in the comments. Thank you very much. And if you are watching on the replay, down at the bottom um, in the uh, in the description box should also be a link to the comment or to the instructions. Okay, so the first instruction is we're going to, to cut one piece of cord 20 inches long, okay? So the, one of the things that I love about the tying station, or if you have a ruler or a measuring tape or anything, but the tying station actually has a, a ruler here down the side. So 20 inches and generally I give a little bit of extra whenever I do my cutting. It's always good to have a little bit more than a little bit less. And especially if you have a thicker wrist, and I always say, 
breast size is not necessarily indicative of person size. But if you know that you have, say, an eight and a half or a nine inch wrist, I would definitely recommend going to 24 or even 26, maybe 28 inches for this. This is our base, our base length right here, the length that we are going to use to wrap around our wrist. So since I kind of let go of that, I'm just gonna remeasure it. And one of the things about repeat, <clears throat> because it's plastic, right? It's made from recycled water bottles, is the best way to cut it is by using a cord cutter. Now, this is a wildfire cord cutter made by Beetleon. If you don't have a cord cutter, it's one of those tools that I really, really recommend that you have in your tool toolbox. Um, there's certain certain tools that are nice to have and certain tools that are really nice to have. This is a really nice to have tool. I would, I would really recommend. Um, and if you can't find the wildfire one, there are lots of, again, lots of other brands out there. Um, but this is the best way, in my opinion, to cut the cord. It singes or seals the ends Safety first, because this this end gets very, very hot. But you want to make sure that you also put the cap back on. But if you cut this with scissors, excuse me, it will cut. But you see how that frayed at the end right there? So cut with scissors, frayed cut with scissors, nice and singed. And because we are going to be putting beads over this cord at the end, um, I like to have a nice clean ending to it. Michaels does carry the wildfire cord cutter on, it's on michaels.com on the website. Um, which is where, I don't know if you've been to michaels.com lately, but oh my gosh, so many amazing products. I mean, I love going into Michael stores for sure. Um, but I think, I don't want to speak out of turn, but it's like tens of thousands of new things at michaels.com, I feel like these days. Okay, so now what I'm doing here, the first thing I need to do is get some of this extra stuff out of the way so that we can really focus and concentrate on what we're doing here on our project. So there are two, um, I always forget what these things are called. There are two um, base plates here on the tying station and they are in between another plate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two, two foot or so piece of be of um <laughs> repeat cord you can see my cold medicine is kicking in right now and i'm going to secure it under one end here and the other end here okay it doesn't have to be like guitar string um tight but pretty tight you don't you want to be able to get under here because our first thing that we're going to be doing <laughs> is tying some knots to this thread. So now I'm going to um, to use the coral color of repeat cord, one of my favorite, favorite colors. I really, really like this one. And I'm taking out, and this is the, again, the same thing. It's a little baggy. So you can put your extra beads in there. You can put a project in there. Just we wanted to make sure that we were doing all that we could to keep this as sustainable as possible. Now you can see here on the end a really good example of this cord. It's braided cord. I think it is 12, right? A 12 braid. And that is why using the cord cutter on the end is the way to go. Because it takes it from this cut here that floofy cut and trims and seals that end nice and unfrayed okay and we're going to need that because we're going to be stringing our beads onto that so we want to have a nice a nice surface to be able to do that 
we would not be able to string a bead over this floofy end. It just wouldn't work. But to be able to string it over the nice finished end, no problem. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take about six feet, okay? So I happen to have here, um, well, just out of camera, a measuring device. So that's two feet, four feet, and six feet that I measured out. It just goes a little bit quicker, but again, measuring device here, 10 inches, perfect. And this comes in very, very handy as well when we are making our bracelet. Once again, I'm gonna take my cord cutter and a um, couple notes about this guy. I know this isn't a cord cutter class, but you wanna, you do not want to hold this button down and burn out the tip. Um, these things, whether they're the Beetle on brand, whether they're another company's brand, tend to eat through batteries pretty quickly. <laughs> it's just the way that it's designed. Um, so you want to hold it down, do your cut and release. You don't want to hold it down and keep holding it down and keep holding it down and kind of watch and get mesmerized by how orange the tip gets. Bad, bad news. <laughs> um, and always, 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 and I try to remember this also, put the cap back on. It just, it gets really hot. All right, so now I'm taking that six foot length. <laughs> and I don't know what's worse, listening to me cough my way through class or have to reschedule it. You guys can let me know. <laughs> and we're going to do a lark's head knot. And even though it's easier to show the um, the tying station like this, it's easier to do the knots like this. And that's how you're going to be doing it as well with the <laughs> tying station perpendicular to you. So that's how I'm going to do it here in our video as well. And we want to come about halfway and put one loop, I'm sorry, put the loop underneath that cord that we have that's clamped down now. The loop is underneath that cord and we're going to bring the two ends over and through. We're just making a lark's head knot. But if you've not done that before, that's how you do it. You just bring the two ends through the loop. I'm gonna bring that nice and tight. I did get a new phone, so I'm still working on um, kind of where the focal length is and you see, I see, we all say, but not bad, right? <laughs> okay, so now I'm not worrying about this top cord at all. I'm just gonna put him away because he doesn't he doesn't come into um doesn't come into play in this step at all. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to use this bottom cord and I'm going to be doing a half hitch knot um nine times or 18 times depending on how you're looking at it. Okay, so first steps first. I'm going to take this cord. And again, when you break down these knots and you do them step by step, it 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 almost overcomplicates it. Once you get it and you get into the rhythm of it, it's much much easier to to just do the knot. But as I'm breaking it down, it's like, oh my gosh, why are there so many steps to just creating that knot? But once you get it and you're like, oh, that's no problem. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a P, right? Or a triangle or a sail, depending on how you learned how to do your macrame knot. But I'm going to make this P shape over the center thread. And I'm going to take got a lot going on over here. I'm going to take the end and I'm going to thread it underneath and through. Okay, we're going to do this a bunch of times. So we're going to see how this works up. Underneath and through and then tighten it up. Okay, I need to bring my camera down a little closer so that we can really see what's going on. Okay, that's better, I think. What's that light? I feel like there are a lot of shadows going on here. I've got I've so much light going on right now. Um, so hopefully it'll be good. Okay, so we just did that half hitch knot. 
<laughs> under, I'm sorry, over. Now we're going to do it underneath and through. And do you see how by going over and then under, it creates this really nice loop right here when I tighten everything up. So we're going to keep, keep going. We're going to do that nine times. So over. I'm going to take my end and come underneath everything and through. And that's part of the reason why I really like the tying station is because there's this space here. If I were doing this on, <clears throat> on the, um, on the clipboard, I wouldn't have as much and as much leeway for my hands. Okay, so I did it over the middle and now I'm going under the middle. Still making that P. So let's actually make that P into and bring it into frame. And I'm going to come now over that middle and through. Okay. I don't have to worry about any anything else. So once again, over, I always find the over ones to be the easiest ones. So underneath and through the center. Mm -hmm. And feel free in the comments as I'm doing this to <coughs> ask any questions to um to say hello to your friends which i know that you're already doing um but ask any questions and as felicia mentioned in the very beginning if i don't see those questions come through which i usually do um then she'll she'll grab me in case there's there's something that i missed just to make sure that i clarify a step or um if there's something that i'm i'm just that you're just not getting that i'm doing please stop me and i'll try to make sure that i'm being as clear as possible okay so now how do i count these stitches i've got one let's put that back into focus shall we one two three four five stitches and i know that the or five knots i should say knots um because of those little bumps right here or they're they're kind of like smiles right so one two three four five smiles so i need four more smiles to get <coughs> my um my end okay so that's one more and each time i'm doing it I am tightening them up. Oh, I know, Cindy. It's I debated rescheduling class, but then I was like, I don't want, I don't know. I, we're just going to power through it together. And then I'm going to go and um, sit on the couch and test new materials. We've got a couple of new things out the lawn coming down the, coming down the pike. That's why it's always a good idea to tune in because... I'm good at keeping a secret unless until it, it comes to a new product that I'm really excited about. <laughs> I won't give all of the information, but I will definitely tease a new um a new Beetle on product, especially when I'm getting the opportunity to um to uh to test it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. Once again, I'm just coming over. And you can see once you get that knot. You don't really have to overthink it too much. It's just over and then under. All right, now we are ready for the next part. And to do that, I'm gonna bop my camera up a little bit <laughs> because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the piece, this middle piece off of the time station. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it this way again so we can really see what I'm doing. So I'm just very gently or just very uh, literally um, releasing the wing nuts and I'm gonna pull this out. So one of the things I love about the tying station is that there are a lot more things that it helps you do than, um, than just the traditional holding things in place for a, um, for a macrame bracelet. So now this that we just did is actually going to become the loop 
for our for our ball or ball our bead that we're making the clasp. So you want to double check and just make sure that the bead that you've chosen, and in this case for the instructions, I've chosen a 10 millimeter bead, that it fits through here without being too tight and too loose. Hmm. Um, so just to, there are a couple questions about what I'm using for the center cord. I am using a different color of the repeat because it's a lot easier to see a contrast when you're teaching or when you're taking a class than if I were doing this all in red, like in the handout. Um, it's just, I've, I've learned over the years that more contrast the more contrast you can give when you're showing something, especially in a video, the easier it is for people to see what's going on. If this were all the same color, it would be a little bit harder to see. Okay, so now what I'm do doing is I'm taking that buttonhole and I'm just putting it, I'm going to um, loosen my wing nut a little bit more, and I'm just putting that right around the top of the tying station. And I don't need to tighten this down or to hold anything in place because what is going to hold it in place is down here at the bottom of the tying station. And for that, I'm going to take these two, <laughs> take these two cords, slide them underneath and tighten that up. So you can see, even if you're not doing this project, a lot of different um, a lot of different applications for this tool that might be more helpful than using a traditional clipboard or um, some of the other ideas that you would be able to use to keep your, your piece in place. So now, this is where we want to get nice and tight, but we also have my fingers or my hands to account for. So we're going to take it slow so we don't hit the camera too much because now what we're going to do is start doing some square knots <clears throat> so just like before we're going to make that p in our right hand side but unlike before we are going over two threads now instead of just that one that we were doing when we were doing the um the half hitch knot now we're doing a square knot so i have my p here I have my left hand cord coming over that cord, so it's crossing it. And now I'm coming underneath both of those center cords and through that triangle. Ooh, lots of steps, way more complicated sounding than it actually is. I'm gonna pull that tight. Now, because I'm using a, a contrasting color center cord, you're gonna see it <coughs> in the middle here. And that's okay if you were doing it all in one color. And as you know from the photo in the um, in the instructions, everything blends together and it is no problem. I'm just gonna take a quick drink of my orange Gatorade, which makes everything better. Oh yeah, it does. You know that I'm sick if I'm going for the orange Gatorade. Okay, so the first triangle that I made was on my right side. Now I'm making my triangle on my left side and I'm just doing that very same thing. I have my triangle here. I'm taking my right side thread this time, bringing it over that triangle thread, coming underneath both of the center threads and through <laughs> the triangle on the left. And I'm pulling that nice and tight. Um, it doesn't need to be overly tightened, but you definitely don't want it to be loose. There's a sweet spot and you can, you'll feel it when you get that nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. All right. So we're going to bring this and I'm going to bring it up to speed real quick, just for that second knot one and two. So you can see that once you get the rhythm of how that knot runs, very, very quick, okay? So for my first knot, I like to do two on each side, so two full square knots. And I can tell that there are two full knots because I have a bump here and I have a bump here. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do 
is I am going to add a bead on each of those cords. And that is why it's so important to have a nice, nice crisp edge. If you don't have a cord cutter, a lighter will do. Um, but using a regular scissors is going to cause that cord to fry. It's just the nature of the material because it is braided and it's not sealed and it's not coated. Um, this is what is going to happen. I actually like that as an ending when I have ends of a bracelet. Just trying to get that into focus. I like because it's nice and soft. <laughs> but... I'm certainly not going to be able to get a bead over the cord otherwise. So the center cord that I'm using is about six feet long, which is more than enough to, um, to use. The um, center cord is about 20 inches. Um, if you have a longer wrist, please feel free to make your center cord 26 inches. Um, it just needs to be enough so that doubled, you can wrap it around your wrist and then have enough to do on a, I'm sorry, enough to put your ends through an end bead and tie a knot. So not a whole lot of waste if you really, um, if you really, uh, do your measurements correctly, but I always think it's good to have a little bit more than not enough in any beading adventure. So I've put one bead on either side, one on one side and one on the other side, and I'm going to go ahead and make those same overhand knots. So I said overhand knots, I meant square knots. So over here, I'm making my triangle and I'm going to bring my other side over, underneath, and through. And that captures those beads into place. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing on the other side, make my triangle, bring my end from the right side through that left side, and capture everything in place. Now, you could use so many different beads here, right? Anything that has a hole that is one, I would say 1.1 millimeters or larger. The larger the hole, the easier it's going to be to get your repeat through it. Um, I have used gemstone beads for this. I have used, um, uh, cube beads for this. I have used the metal beads that the sample is <coughs> using. I did, I was in Michael's the other day and I grabbed these ceramic beads. Um, this is the part number here. Focal length on this is just a little lower than my other phone. So 717773 for these ceramic beads. I thought that those would be a really pretty um pretty way of doing it. One thing that does not work that I was a little disappointed in are size six seed beads. <clears throat> when I had originally conceived of this project, I really wanted to use some size six seed beads and they just, they just didn't work. Um, but if you have beads with large holes and I have amassed a great, great collection of beads with large holes over the years, um, they are great for doing this project. If you like the way this project looks, feel free to do it with different cord. Um, Beelon cord would be great for this. I've actually done macrame in this style with Beelon bead stringing wire. <laughs> um, that is a that is beautiful. If you use like an O two four silver color, um, bead stringing wire, really really neat. Um way of using this technique. Um, but this is it. So I'm going to do this a couple more times and then we're going to get to the end. I actually did cooking show this for you all because I knew that watching the same thing over and over and over and over and over again might not be the most fun that we could have together as a class. Um, but 
always good to have um, some good repetition. And a good rep repetitive project is a really great way to learn a new skill. So over, I've got my, my two in the middle. I'm bringing that red thread. over and creating that, that triangle, my right hand thread is coming underneath and through. And I like to also think about these in terms of quadrants. <clears throat> so if I have quadrants one, two, three, and four, I'm coming from quadrant, in this case, four to quadrant one. So different ways of thinking about it so that it ends up sticking. Um, this is the last one I do. And then we're gonna head to my other example and get everything finished up. Easy peasy project. So while I am doing my last one, question for the crowd, right? As I am planning future classes for the Michaels Community Classroom, what do you most want to see so you know kind of where where I stand or my, my my areas of expertise. We've got stringing, we've got wire work, we've got macrame. Um, think about the, the beetle on products that we have in Michael's. Um, next week's class is going to be, or I'm sorry, next month's class is going to be all about memory wire. So that's going to be a really, really fun one. We're going to talk about basics and advanced or more advanced um, things that you can do with memory wire. But I always want to know, is there, is there something that you have been dying to learn? Um, that's what I'm here for, is to make sure that we're teaching things that you um, that you want to, to learn. Okay, so here we are. Let's pretend I've gone and gone and gone and gone and gone. And through the magic of TV, I have a whole nother... <laughs> Um, I've done, I've done all the way down and I've done about seven and a quarter inches. And that's a good, a good length for me for my wrist. So um, I just switched out. So instead of having red on the top, I have black on the top. Um, but here it is the, um, the cream color, the cloud color in the, um, in the center. So I did that one, um, that one square knot. And just to make it the same as, as, as at the top, I'm gonna do one more square knot. I like some of the ideas that are coming through right now. Very, very good. Um, and of course, any bracelet can become an anklet, right? You just have to measure your ankle and do whatever the bracelet is that you want to be a little bit longer. All right, so here I am. I've come to the end of my design and I'm ready to take it off of the tying station. I'm just gonna bop my camera up just a skosh. And real simple, I'm gonna un, un tighten the wing nut and just pull this right out. And same thing here. But this one I probably need to just take all the way off so I can pull that button loop out. Um, one of my favorite ways to do clasp designs is using buttons. Um, and this using a bead rather than a button is also a favorite of mine. Um, and this actually, I love the idea. One of the biggest challenges we always have as jewelry makers is making... Um, um, bracelets or any jewelry really that both men and women can use. <clears throat> um, this is a great project for that, I think. Um, this in, in particular with the black and the cloud and the silver really, really stands out as a, as something that would be very masculine, um, to me. Okay. So first things first, I'm now, I'm ready to finish off, right? I nodded, nodded, nodded. Um, came to the end of my design and um, now I am ready to seal these ends. Okay, so once again, I'm getting out my cord cutter. Um, if 
I feel like there's always one takeaway that I want everyone to get from class. And today's class, my takeaway really is how invaluable this tool is. I reached for it a lot in my the type of beadwork that I do. Um, so what I'm going to do is very carefully, and this definitely comes with some practice and some failures. I want to trim this long thread right here, and I want to melt it to the loop behind it. So the easiest thing to do first is just to trim it, okay? <clears throat> now I'm going to come through here, and I usually do this in one in one step, but I'm just going to melt it just by kind of um, um, what is this motion that I'm doing by brushing it against that thread that comes before it um, to melt it into place. This is made, as I had, as I've said, with recycled water bottles. So it's plastic. So it melts against itself. And what I meant to say in the beginning also is if you do go into Michael's <laughs> where you can find the repeat is on the stringing wall. It's right above in most um, in most instances, it's right above where the parachute cord is um, and where all of those great stringing materials are and to the on the the right hand side of the beading wire, at least in my Michaels, it is. Um, that's one of the things that I always want to want to try to um, help people with is where in the world um, things are when you go into Michaels, right? Because they have so much great stuff. But then you walk in, and even I walk in, and I go in at least once a week, um, and I'm all, all oftentimes overwhelmed by all of the cool things. This is the Wildfire Cord Cutter. Um, and again, this is the Beetle on Brands. This is the one that I use. And there are different cord cutters out there. Um, and I've actually seen some really innovative new styles as well that I kind of want to try out and maybe encourage us to bring into the Beetle on product mix as well. So here I'm going to need a bead with a much bigger hole, right? So these bead holes are are nice. It's kind of hard to to really tell. Um, and I could probably get two let or yeah, two um diameters of um the repeat cords through. But for my my um my clasp bead, I just want to make sure that my hole is going to be big enough for both of those cords to go through. And I just thread them through. I don't need a needle. I don't need anything. And even in using a needle is not going to really work because um, you would have to get four of the lengths through and that's just not going to be a possibility. So here what I do is I pull these over just in an overhand knot. And they're, they're, they're smaller um, um, ends than perhaps are the most easy to work with. So I'm just going to grab here a pliers and pull them through, right? Trick of the trade. If you are having trouble grabbing your tails through a knot, pliers are a great way to get that done. Another invaluable tool. I was using this as a pointer earlier, the beating all. Uh, much like the wildfire cord cutter, a beading awl is a tool that I never have far away from my beading mat because whenever I need to tighten up a knot, see the best way that I can show this, I put my beading awl in and it really helps get that knot nice and tight. Okay, so I've got my knot here, I've got my bead here. I've got my ends here. Now I could do one of two things here. I could trim and seal them with my wildfire cord cutter, but since I don't need them for any other reason except to be decorative, I'm actually gonna come and snip them off with a nice sharp pair of scissors. And I'm gonna floof them out, mostly because I like floofing things. But you can see, especially if you were doing um, like a tassel or, yeah, a tassel or an end like this or an end 
like I have here on these, um, on these, <coughs> excuse me, nice and floofy. I just think it looks good. <laughs> That's right. Floofing and dangle do's. If I can be known for anything, floofing and dangle do's are definitely something that I want to be known for. I don't glue this knot. Um, I don't really need to. Um, I think if I glued that knot, it would look a little stiff. Um, I certainly could glue it. There's no reason why I, no, there's nothing saying that I can't. I know people do like to glue knots. Um, I tend not, not to glue my knots. When would I glue a knot? Sometimes I glue knots, but in this case, I just like how, how it has a nice organic finish to it. And then the way that the um the way that the the clasp works is all you do is you thread the knot and the bead through. Right? Really fun. And now, now that you know the general technique and the tools that you need to use, there are a gazillion, literally so many different beads and cords and end beads and different ideas that you can use this technique for. Crystals down the side, if you had crystals that had big enough holes, or if you use thinner thread. I am loving being able to show this project with the repeat because it's a new product in um, in Michael's. <laughs> But lots and lots of different materials that not only do you have in your stash, but that you might see on the walls of the Michael stores or on michaels.com when you're shopping online that pique your creativity. So that is it for me today, Felicia. I think that if you want to go ahead and bring up that top facing camera, I can say goodbye to all of my beady friends. Um, and one good question, does the repeat strength in time. I'm not 100% sure what you're asking, Pam, but it is it is recycled plastic water bottles. So it is a very strong, very durable material um, that I love that we have taken a water bottle that was destined for the landfill or unfortunately for the ocean and turned it into something that we can make it with uh, that we can turn into jewelry. Um, it's incredibly durable. Again, the best way to seal and cut it is with a wildfire cord cutter. If you're using scissors, it's going to floof, but you might want that for an effect, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, my next class for Michaels is going to be memory wire in about a month. Hopefully I'll feel a little bit better by then, but we've got a lot of really exciting things coming up. So I appreciate everybody hanging out with me and sticking sticking by for class. If you um, don't, don't remember, in about 24 hours, this will be available again on the replay on the Michaels um, YouTube channel. And if you get a chance, go Go poke around over there. There's a lot of really great things to learn. So Felicia, thank you so much for moderating. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me today. And until next time, happy beating.